It was a minute-by-minute -minute recounting of that lunch hour in the park on September 21st. Mrs. Miles said as she and Jean Vice got back into their car, suddenly both doors flew open. When I turned, there was a masked man with a gun. The men ordered the women out of their car. Betty Ann Miles said she was pushed to the ground and ordered to take off her jewelry. When she gave the gunman her ring, she noticed his long, slender fingers, smooth skin, and black hair. The same hands she believes that she picked out weeks later in an unusual hand lineup, the hands of defendant Anthony Wiley. Betty Ann Miles never broke down as she described the beatings. Only occasionally would her voice quiver and the tears come to her eyes. She told of their forced march at gunpoint into the woods, how one of the men ordered Jean Vice to take off her clothes. She refused, Mrs. Miles testified. The tall man then said, if you don't take your clothes off, I'm going to kill you. Then kill me. Those may have been Jean Vice's last words. Betty Ann Miles told of the terrible beating both women received, the sexual abuse, the forced sodomy, the unconsciousness. She described her attempt to call to Jean Vice when the men had gone, but Mrs. Vice was probably already dead. Medical examiner Joe Burton said she was stomped to death, a broken breastbone puncturing the sac around her heart. When the sac filled with blood, he said, it prevented her heart from beating any longer. Dr. Burton testified that even if Jean Vice had survived that injury, the sexual abuse alone could have killed her. Defense attorney Paul Cobb rested his case without ever putting a witness on the stand. Cobb says no one has ever corroborated La Paz Favor's testimony that Wiley was in fact in the park the day of the attack. And Wiley to this day maintains he was out job hunting when the beatings occurred. According to Wiley's attorney, I think we've presented the jury with a valid defense. At the DeKalb County Courthouse, Dennis Cow, Action News tonight.